We are 100% potty trained. Welcome or welcome back to the channel. It's the Puro Mom again with the two toy Puros. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you how I potty trained our new puppy in less than a week. To be more specific, in less than three days. Using potty pads. This method will work even for people with carpeted floors or any kind of flooring. So I think it's also another option compared to our previous video, which I shared, where I used the newspaper training. So if you guys are interested in that, then please keep on watching. If you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and maybe share the video as it will really, really help the channel. All right, let's dive into it. So here are the things that you will need. Of course, you cannot do potty training without pee pads. Now, I use two sizes and I will be explaining later on in this video why I use two sizes of pee pads. Next would be the cleaning sprays. You cannot do potty training without cleaning sprays because it will keep you sane and it will keep your room smelling okay because puppies are messy. I cannot emphasize that enough. Expect that your room will smell like pee for some time and the cleaning sprays will help keep you sane, especially with the smell. And then of course, your chosen wet ones or wet wipes, baby wipes, whatever you call it in your home country. This keeps me sane and keeping Finn clean because he's one very, very messy puppy. And it kind of saves pee pads as well. So when he poops, all I have to do is get one wet wipe and then pick it up and then throw it in the trash. Next would be an alarm clock that will surely wake you up. Since I have an iPhone and I use Apple, I use Siri. So I just tell Siri to wake me up or set an alarm for me. But during that time, thankfully, <laughs> my brother had an old Echo Dot or Echo Dot, whatever you call it, that, um, you know, that voice command AI thing that where, where you say Alexa and then you tell her something to do. So I thankfully set it up right on time. It was just by chance. I wasn't doing it for Finn whatsoever because I never thought it would be very, very useful in setting up alarms for us when we were waking up every two to three hours to get Finn in and out of the crate to do his business. Alexa wakes us up in three hours. Because that's how strict the schedule I make for the potty training is to make sure that the potty training becomes a breeze and it just happens as fast as possible. And last but not the least is a lot of patience and I cannot emphasize this enough. Even if Finn is 100% potty trained, what do I mean by 100% potty trained? It means that I know he knows where he needs to go to do his business. But the thing is, you have to understand that they are still puppies. And they're not as capable as adult dogs in holding their bladder. And so you can expect that puppies will still make mistakes. And so does Finn. I consider him completely potty trained because every time he makes a mistake, he would either just miss the mark or he, he's running towards that direction, but then he just can't hold it anymore and he would just do his business along the way. So that's where the um, cleaning sprays are very handy as well. So you need a lot of patience for that because you cannot get mad at a puppy for making those mistakes because they don't really understand human language. So patience, patience, patience. All right, so the first thing you have to do is to pick an area in your room where you wanna set up your area for your puppy. In this case, I cleaned up this area of my room. This is where my girls' beds used to be. And I set it up on the other side of the room over there in the meantime, while I am training Finn, because that's where I will set up the playpen. All right, so the first step is actually to wait. Much like the first method, you can't control where your puppy will pee and do their business, which is why in this case, I limited their access through the playpen or the pen in this case. I did not put any pee pad whatsoever. I just waited for him to do his business. Now you can speed things up by offering them something to drink because more than likely they will pee immediately after they drink, maybe five to 10 minutes, maximum 30 minutes. They will do their business. It's natural for puppies to do that. Once he pees, I'm going to get a pee pad and then basically get the pee pad to soak the pee. Let's say he peed over here. So let the pee pad soak the pee. And then later on, you can, of course, wipe it clean with the cleaning sprays that you got and then reverse it and then put it down. So I will not clean it up. Chances are your pup will either pee in the same area 
or maybe pee on the other side. So if he does, all I will do is get another sheet of pee pad and then do the same thing. Let it soak and then flip it over again. Now, once they're used to it, it's no guarantee that they will pee in the same area. It might be, they might even pee on another area. But given that you limited the access already for Finn, thankfully, he peed in the same area. But the problem was he went a little over the pee pad. So in that case, I either upgraded to the bigger pee pad and then put multiple ones because I wanted to protect the ground of my floor. Now it's really up to you. In this case, I always have two sizes with me. More often than not, I usually use the bigger ones in the beginning just to limit the chances of the puppy from making mistakes. You want to set up your dogs for success every single time because you getting mad at them will not work because they do not understand human language. That's one thing that I learned the hard way. You cannot get mad at a dog for no reason because they don't understand you getting mad. They just understand your gestures. If you think that your dog understands you verbally, it's not because of that. It's because they're reading your movements, your facial expressions, and everything. That's everything to a dog, unless you introduce them the words. So this was basically our setup. So once you see that he constantly goes to the same area for pottying, this is where you can attach the command. Go potty, go potty, or go pee pee, go pee pee. Then they will do their business. Go potty. Potty first. Now, people will ask me, what if you have carpeted floors? So of course, you cannot wait for the puppy to pee and then just let it soak because the carpet for sure will soak it. So what I would do, I limit their access even further using the crate and then I lay down all the pee pads all over the floor to make sure that wherever he does his business, there is a pee pad there. Now, all you have to do there is to wait and see if he will keep doing his business in the same area. Now, I suggest leaving the same set of pee pads on it for at least a whole day. Now, once you think your puppy is used to peeing in the same area where you taught them where to pee, then you can slowly remove one pee pad at a time, depending on how the progress is of your pups. If you think they make a mistake, it's too soon for you to remove it and you've already removed it, all you have to do is put it back, plain and simple. Now, the only thing is, the truth is, you're gonna have to bear with the smell of the pee on the pee pad. It will smell, but not as bad as you think it would. And it is a lot less messier than the newspaper training, which I showed in our previous video. So it's really up to you which one would work best for your lifestyle. Just make sure that your puppy does not play with um, the pee pad because chances are they will, they will play on the pee pad, much like Finn. So when that happens, what I do is I try to claim my space over the pee pad. What do I mean by that? Like I said, dogs do not understand human language, so you would have to tell them through their own language. Now, I know it seems a little weird sometimes because quite frankly, I did weird stuff, but it kind of worked because you have to speak to them in their language. So in this case, I claimed the space over the pee pad. Now, it's not gonna work every single time for every single dog, but thankfully it worked for Finn. You can give it a shot. If it works for you, then I would be so happy for you. Otherwise, there are a lot of YouTube videos. You can check them out or better yet, um, seek the help of a professional trainer. So I, what I would do is let's say if this is the pee pad and then he's playing all over it, chewing over it, all I would do is claim the space, meaning I would invade his space and put my hand over it and do not move. Now, the problem with this is you would be scared that your puppy will keep on biting. Now, in order to stop that, you cannot just say no, 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 or stop, stop, stop. That doesn't work for a puppy because more movement it entices a dog. If you keep moving and um, react to their gestures and everything, they get more excited because they think that you are responding and are playing with them. So the best way to do it is to just ignore them. Claim the space. Every time they try to invade elsewhere, just move your hand over it and then so on and so forth. Much like what I'm doing here with Finn in this video. So here in this video, I'm encouraging Finn to play with me. See how every movement that I make gets him super excited? and he just wants to play and play and play, no matter what kind of movement. But notice once I stop moving, he also stops and somewhat loses attention or he's waiting for me to start moving again like this. 
So this is much like what we would normally do when we try to stop them from playing with us when we clean up the pee pad. The more you move, the more you say words and stuff, that's gonna get them excited even more. So the best way to do it is to actually stop and wait for them to stop. Or what you can do is make a little sound to stop them from touching you. Much like here in this video. And so this is the result of the potty training in less than three days. Potty trained on command. This is just part one of our potty training video. And there's another one that we will link up into the cards above as well as in the description box below about the tips and tricks and how we sped up our potty training. If you guys are interested in that, please check it out after this video. So that's it. We hope you enjoyed the video and maybe learned something from it, no matter how little it is. Um, I'm not sure <laughs> if this um, adds more value than our previous video, but I hope it did. And we hope you enjoyed it. So thank you guys so much for watching, thank you for subscribing, and we'll see you again next time. I hope you become successful with your potty training. Bye! That video took the longest out of all the videos I've ever shot. I don't know how I did it with the editing, but I hope <laughs> it solves all the cuts because I'm all over the place. Last time I had someone to help me shoot it. Now it was just it's just me and my wonderful tripod that I'm talking to. I'm so weird. Talking to a camera. It's one of the weirdest things doing YouTube. <laughs> talking to a camera all by yourself in your room. Sometimes my mom would nod at me there. And then she would say, Who are you talking to? Uh, I'm shooting a video. <laughs>